Okay, this is my dad's documentary of his childhood days. Yes, this documentary is entitled Adventures in Old Town. Are we on? Oh, okay, this is like one of many unlikely playgrounds for me as a child, which was actually underneath this bridge right here, and beyond that, out to a little river, actually more of a stream, sometimes it would dry up into a creek, it's called Cameron Run. And we spent a lot of time down here catching fish, turtles, snakes, and the like. And sometimes, uh, well, let's go down and take a look, see some of the other stuff down here. Okay, now this is, uh, in the background here you see, this used to be the C&J Delicatessen. It stood for Cronin and Jackson, those two old guys that used to run the place. And actually, one of the families lived up in that little brick building up on top of there. Can you see that? And this was another big hangout. It's right down here on Telegraph Road, if you look out here. This was uh, Gasoline Alley. And actually, there's like, you know, a couple of gas stations around here. Used to be a place right over across the street there. It's now a vacant lot. It was called the What a Burger, like W H A T. What a Burger. Now, if you uh, if you look over here at this intersection, just beyond that uh, Ruffles truck, that's where I got hit by a car when I was in the fourth grade. So this this was like a really uh, <laughs> big area for me in my childhood. Another big hangout. This was like on the other side of that bridge I showed you early on. That's Cameron Run over there. This is Telegraph Road right over top of me. And uh, underneath this bridge here, we used to kind of hang out underneath here and uh, we smoke cigarettes and stuff like that. We were kind of, uh, kind of neighborhood, hoodlum type kids. And uh, this was all a lot deeper too. This this is actually filled in quite a bit, but maybe just in my memory, it was a lot deeper. A lot further, and it was a much deeper gorge with uh, uh, the river was actually wider in times. Okay, now this was another big hangout, and I already talked about this before. This is part of the CJ delicatessen. The other side was the um, place where you could buy uh, groceries and stuff and then this side was where you could sit down and order a hamburger and hang out and listen to the jukebox and which we used to do that back in the 60s and again if you look over here you'll see the intersection where I got hit by a car that's it Telegraph Road and North King Highway and then this road down here is the road that leads to where we lived and right down there, that was a, a big road for me because we used to come back and forth from the pool down here to the delicatessen, to the CJ delicatessen. And this was like a major thoroughfare, a, a, a well-traveled roadway for us. We'd ride our bikes right down here, always come down this little hill. So this is, uh, has a lot of memories. Okay, now here is my house. This is where we lived uh, from the early 1960s, actually more like 1959, until about 1968, 69. And then we moved to Hayfield in 1970, I think, somewhere around there. But this is it, you can see the side yard. We had a big side yard, we used to play football a lot. Um, it's not there anymore, but right across the street from our house was uh, Woods. Now they built a big building here. So uh, this is uh, this was my house. We lived right on the corner of Chapin Avenue and and uh, Burgundy Road. And there you go. Okay, now this, we traveled back through the woods, and uh, we're back in the place where a terrible thing happened to me at one point in time. You can see here, there's uh, things have changed a little bit, 
Uh, this used to be a little bit higher off the ground and it used to kind of dump down into a creek bed. And if you uh, come around and look down in here a little bit, you can see there's a, a creek back here. Um, and, and that right there used to be a natural bridge. Uh, right there where you see that, that part of that precipice jutting out, it used to be a natural bridge that actually went over the creek. So it was really neat. It was comprised of roots and dirt stuck together and you could go underneath there, almost like a little mini cave. But uh, back to the story, uh, I once, in second grade, I, I was uh, head over heels about this little red-headed girl with freckles all over her face, and her name was Kathy, and, uh, and I used to buy Kathy things and bring her things all the time, and I remember there was a guy next door to her named Chucky, kind of a fat boy, and uh, Chucky had called me over to the fence one day, and he says, hey, Jamie, he says, uh, Kathy hates you, and I said, oh, no, she doesn't, and he said, oh, yes, she does, and she said, he said, no, she doesn't. I said, no, she doesn't. He said, yes, she does. And anyway, we had an argument. And, uh, and then, and then he, uh, he says, okay, well, I tell you what, you go hide over there in the bushes and I'll call Kathy over here. So I went and I hid and he called Kathy over to the fence and he says, Kathy, you hate Jamie, don't you? And she goes, yes. He said, say it louder. You hate Jamie, don't you? And, and again, Kathy said, yes, I, I hate Jamie. And he said, well, did you hear that, Jamie? And I stood up and I said, yeah, I heard it. And all of a sudden, Kathy just burst into tears, ran to the back door of her house and said, Chucky, I hate your guts, and slammed the door. And so I was feeling really down about that. And I came up here, and this was kind of a, a place where I used to get away from it all as a little boy, a little second grader. And uh, I sat down on this bank right here. And I was kind of feeling sorry for myself and sitting there, and I had my hands crossed on my knees. And as I was sitting here, I fell asleep. And the next thing I know, as I was waking up, I'm sliding off this bank and falling. And it was a good fall at the time. You can't see, if you look down here now, you can see it's still, a, it's a little bit of a fall, but not much. Um, come over here and look just over the ledge here. Look over this ledge. And you can see uh, that tree right there. Actually, where this tree is right here, there was another larger tree and some of them have fallen over the ledge because this was you know 20 something years ago the landscape has changed and eroded uh, drastically since then but there was a tree up here with a beehive in it which uh, Pat Lewis and Robert Lewis uh, Kathy's brothers actually pulled a beehive out Robert put a uh, potato sack over his head pulled a beehive out and ran down the hill to the Lewis's house which is right over here and uh, right down there beyond that power line and over that hill, over the crest of that hill. So we had honey. We actually had natural honey for a while. Um, so there's been a lot of adventures down here. Come and look down here. This creek right here is really significant. If you walk over here with me, uh, you can look down, look down at this creek over here. Look over there. That's all uh, places I used to hang out. And, uh, you know, we used to occasionally run across uh, water moccasins and different types of snakes, catching uh, tadpoles, etc. So let's go on to the next place. Well, anyway, to continue my story, after I got, uh, after I fell off that cliff, it knocked the wind out of me and I laid there crying and uh, trying to cry, trying to catch my breath. And uh, someone just happened to be walking through the woods at that time, looked down, saw me there lying on my belly, at the bottom of that little cliff crying and his name was Paige Thompson. Paige picked me up and carried me home and uh, my view was probably much like your view is right here just walking through the woods headed back to my little house there across the way. Uh, as you see we got power lines here. The power lines uh, always uh, they cut a path right through the middle of the forest and so the forest was divided by this power line area which was a made a little field between the two forest areas. Now there's a parking lot in this place where once there was a tree fort that my dad built for me and Danny and uh, many other things. Lots of woods. We named each section of the woods. We had something called the, the monkey vines and we had another area called the, the jungle and uh, leprechauns, the leprechauns woods. So as kids, we spent much time back here. And here's Chapin Avenue. Some of Chapin Avenue, uh, looking down as we uh, look at it from the direction of 
the upper part of the road and looking down toward Elmwood, actually, I'm sorry, Burgundy Road. And there's looking back up Chapin Avenue toward where the Shazers and the Pierces lived, who were our, uh, our rivals. Uh, we often had rock battles with trash can lids for shields. Over in this field here is where we used to uh, ride our mini bikes, uh, little dirt bikes and things, go-karts. Okay, now this is the blacktop. This was the area, if you kind of pan around here, you can see this was the top of the hill right above where we lived, and this is where many battles were fought. When these houses were being made, they dug holes in the ground for the basements, and we used to fight over those holes in the ground because we used to make little forts out of them. And we started out with dirt clogs. Most of the time it was dirt clogs. Sometimes it turned into stones, and I have many a battle scar on my face I could show you uh, at some other point in time. But uh, you can see it's a pretty good view from up here. You can see a lot of uh, territory off in the distance, high rises and such, which uh, was all part of it. If you look over here, um, you can see exactly uh, how much of a view we have. Look at all that over there. This is all the, uh, the railroad area. Uh, looking down on kind of the Duke Street corridor, just above Old Town. Actually, I should say just west of Old Town. And all that kind of interesting stuff like that, huh? And there is, uh, right there is Quaker Lane. So you can see quite a bit from up here. That's some view. All this railroad track area, the hobos used to jump trains, come off the railroad tracks, and there used to be a bridge that crossed over 495 and came over near our area and uh, into a little wooded place of our neighborhood, which we called Hobo Jungle. And they would actually steal sheets and things off of people's clotheslines and make little tents, camp out down there. All that going on in the 1960s, folks. Okay, now this is the way up, the driveway up to the mayor's house. Actually says no trespassing, so I should probably uh, not go too much farther than this. But uh, we used to trespass here all the time as children, and we'd come up here. There was, they actually had an area where they, um, they had barbed wire and they had horses. And the mayor's, um, I don't know if the mayor still live here or not, but I can remember there was a tree fort back in here too that was really intriguing to us. We, uh, I used to come up here and we, we were afraid to climb up that tree fort, but there up on the hill is the mayor's house. It's getting kind of rough back here. Um, better get out of here or they might chop us up into lumber. Let's see if I can find a place to turn around. Uh, it doesn't look like they have any horses here anymore, but I remember there used to be a sign up on the tree here, right around the corner, that said Sound Horn. And for years, as a child, I wondered what Sound Horn meant. What does Sound Horn mean? I thought it was some type of, you know, Cape Good Horn or Cape Horn or some kind of uh, name of something. But in, in actuality, it was just telling anybody driving up here that they should sound their horn. And there's their house. It's kind of a, a nice looking place all up here by, uh, in this neighborhood, it's, it's quite a difference from the rest of the area surrounding it. This could be all the remains of the old uh, mayor's farm uh, barbed wire area. You can see the, the little insulator for down here. Can you see that, the little white insulator on this? I don't know if the, I don't know if the camera can get an eye view of that or not, but that's where some of the electrical fence barbed wire used to be. So this is uh, a little bit of memory right here from my past. We used to climb over these fences and actually go try to play with the horses. Up along this uh, ridge, this is the side of the road as we go up uh, Burgundy Road. As you can see, um, it's kind of an embankment there. One time mom wrecked the Gogomobile, which was a little tiny car that, that dad had, some little import. Uh, wrecked it right into the ditch there. Danny had to get stitches on his chin, at, and it was after she had dropped me off for kindergarten uh, at the top of this street. Uh, up at the top of that uh, embankment, there's a pathway. We used to run up and along this pathway. It was really fun. 
pretended like we were Indians and uh, running along the paths uh, at the top of the woods there looking down at the cars. Kind of gave us a, a neat feeling as kids and uh, we had a lot of fun there. We, sometimes we could even get our bikes up there and, and ride, do some rough riding. Okay, now this is uh, where we're going to conclude here and we're going to kind of finish up where I started in this neighborhood, which was at Burgundy Farms Kindergarten. It was a private school and they had all kinds of little farm animals that you could feed and they had a swimming pool and they had uh, just a, a lot of neat kind of uh, unordinary things for us to do as kindergartners. And this is where I started out as a very young little boy. We'll pick up next time, probably starting right here, and continue on this exciting journey through my childhood.